Do you want your songs to sound more like this? I'm Draven. I typically make high gain amp demos here on YouTube, but um, lately I've been getting a bunch of requests to make more mixing related stuff. And so today we're going to be taking a look at how I process bass in demos and mixes and stuff. Um, before we jump in, I just want to mention that like the techniques that I use in this demonstration won't always work, but for a lot of low tuned heavy stuff it'll it'll get you pretty close so kind of just take these as like general concepts and not necessarily a not necessarily a tone that's going to work every time but yeah before we jump into the bass tone i will show you kind of all of what's going on in this mix so yeah let's take a take a look at that so in this i used rs drums as the drum library um, and on those on their own they sound like this with no processing or anything and just as a a quick run through I just did some parallel compression with uh, JST bus glue drums, and that sounds like this. Just add some depth to it, and then I just limited the snare hits a little bit because they were sticking out, and that sounds like this. And then for guitars, I used Neural DSP's Gojira plugin, um, which on their own, they sound like this. And before the guitar plugin, I just took out some like low mid stuff that I'd usually have an issue with with my guitar playing personally. Um, and then other than that, it's kind of just random noises that I threw in or made. Yeah, so let's get into making the tone. So in this, I used a bass VST, like a plugin. Um, and it it's just a, a plugin version of a bass. Works pretty good. Um, so tone wise, before before I usually end up doing any processing, I kind of do a few things to fix some problems that I know I'll run into. So in this, I grabbed just an EQ and pulled up a little more of the clank that I wanted and took out some low end frequencies so there wasn't so much buildup. And that way it also shapes the distortion once we get to that part. Also, for all the processing of the bass, I used free plugins, so you guys can kind of download them or find something similar that you want to use. So, what I do is I take my bass, like, signal, 
and I split it into three signals and throw that into a folder or a bus, whatever you want to call it. And so what we do with the, the three signals is split it into three sections of the bass tone. So here we have the sub And then we have the mid section. And the clank. And so yeah, I'll go through and kind of show you guys what I'm doing with each one and kind of the purpose of what I'm doing with it. And so you can kind of take it and, you know, do what you will with it. Um, so I will turn off the bus processing on the base and we'll, we'll go through that uh, near the end. But, so starting with the, the sub base, we've got two, two EQs and a compressor. So what I'm basically doing with this is I'm cutting out all of the top end because I just want this to be just the low end and I want it to be as like clean as possible. So what we're doing is cutting out pretty much everything above 100 hertz and then we're compressing it by a, a good little bit, nothing like super, super crazy. And what that's doing is we're just getting a, like a super solid foundation for the low end. So that way, if you need to put in like side chaining or anything like that for your kick drum to like stick through, that's easy. And also with the low end of a, a bass guitar, it's kind of all over the place. Whether it's the picking hand that's just like inconsistent or you're going up and down notes a lot you're gonna find just a bunch of like variants. So with the compressor, we're just kind of flattening that out so we don't have to deal with it later. And then from the compressor, um, a lot of compressors will add some sort of like coloring or compressing stuff super hard can saturate it or, you know, add distortion. So without the last EQ, it sounds like this. There's like some pops and like just little noises. And so we go back in with another EQ and kind of just cut out all that extra stuff that came from the compressor. Any like saturation that kind of brought up more harmonics and stuff. We're just cutting that out with this. And that sounds like this. just takes out some of those like pops and stuff like that but that's like that's my approach for the the low end it's pretty simple and i feel like you can pretty much use that in like any scenario if you're just looking for super clean low end and then we'll move on to the mid-range which this is like pretty subtle i kind of just put it in to like bring back some warmth because i i do tend to make very scooped bass tones. Um, so with this, we're EQing it. I'll turn off these two. We're just focusing on the mid and low mid areas. And so on that, on its own, it sounds like this. And with that, I wanted to add like some amount of distortion to it. So I found this plugin online, the Growler. It's free. 
so I just wanted to, I kind of wanted to use like free plugins for this whole thing just so you guys can go download them, like I said. Um, yeah, so with this, we're just adding a little bit of distortion. I don't think I even touched any of the settings, honestly. Just to try and get that like kind of throaty sound in there. And then we're hitting it with an EQ again because with distortion and saturation comes more harmonics and stuff. So we wanted to tighten that up. Just so it's not in the way of other parts of the bass and you can control it more with the other aspects of your mix. Alright, and then Clank, or Grit, it's pretty similar, I'm using the same plugin, but this route we went and kind of just took out some low end, so with bass tones, if you leave that low end in, you're going to get like an entirely different like characteristic of distortion and stuff, because it's going to be reacting to that low end as well as your top end, so you want to take that out if you're looking for just like top end clank, if you're if you're trying to get like a well-rounded kind of thing, you can absolutely like not cut the low end. But in this case I did because I just wanted just the clank from that in here. So without the other plugins, just the EQ. very focused on just the clank and then we'll introduce the distortion and I'll turn that first EQ off so you can hear kind of the difference just cleans it up a bunch and then so after that and with with these I just kind of you know dialed it into taste I knew I didn't want any bass out of it so I cut the bass and found a good spot where the the treble was sitting and so after that we added another EQ and I just used this EQ to kind of shape the tone a little bit um, so I'll show you that with and without it. And here's with here's without it. I just really wanted to get that upper clank in there. And so that's that's the general tone that we're gonna get, um, and you just kind of balance them to taste. And so without any bus processing, I'll show you guys how that sounds. And like I was saying earlier, like with the mid, it's very quiet. Um, just kind of have it in there to like bring in some warmth. Um, I'll play it without the mid range. It's super subtle. All right, and we'll check out the bus processing, which was pretty simple. Alright, and so with the bus processing, I just added some saturation, and what that'll do is kind of what we were taking out earlier was like, you know, the, the bad sounding stuff that we don't want in there. And so you get a lot of, a lot of empty spaces in your, in your tone 
when you're kind of doing that kind of thing where you're cutting out everything. Um, so you can use saturation to kind of build those areas back up in a way that you want, or at least that I want. And so with this, I'm keeping the low end. We're not saturating the low end at all. We're just kind of getting the the mid to upper range saturated so it's like smoothed out and so I'll show you that on and off with that it makes it a lot louder but Hopefully you can kind of tell the difference on the, just like, overall roundness of it. And then after that, I just went in with an EQ and kind of took out some sections that I didn't want. That were maybe either just didn't sound how I wanted it, or were clashing with other instruments in the mix. Um, so... As you can see here, I took out some low end just to give like the kick drum some room and pretty much like everything below like 30 to like 20 to 30 hertz is you can't really hear it. Um, and so in the the 200 area, personally, I just don't like how bass sounds in that area. So I always pretty much cut it out, but it also that area fights a lot with the snare drum and it also fights a little bit with the guitar for like palm mutes and stuff. Um, and then like I said earlier, I kind of like, I kind of just like scooped bass tones. So I'm just kind of scooping out some of the areas that I don't like, which I can, I can show you with and without the EQ so you can kind of hear what I'm taking out. So I'll just hit this bypass button and you guys can hear the difference. Yeah, and that's that's basically it. I feel like it's a pretty like simple setup that works a lot of the time, but like I said, not every time. I feel like these are just good useful techniques to try out. Yeah, hopefully this was um, somewhat helpful for you guys. Uh, if you have any questions or anything like that, feel free to hit me up and ask away. Let me know if I missed anything that you guys want me to go more in depth on and um, any other mixing things that you want to know or anything like that. I just want to put in a note that I now have t-shirts on my website if you guys were interested in those at all. They look like this. But yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.